Good morning, everyone. This morning we are talking about part partial, part social, part political type of subject. The title of the subject is People Power. The power of people is the most powerful Herculean strength that power has. It can make every single thing to change. And it has been rising everywhere in the world against all kinds of corrupt, crooked and kleptocratic leaders. Rulers in most of the nations have been abusing, misusing power against the people. They have been corrupt, they have been stealing every single thing, they have been robbing the nation with both hands. It has been going on even in Israel. Otherwise, the Jewish nation of Israel and the Jewish people everywhere were considered more moral, more ethical than other people. But Benjamin, Prime Minister of Israel, is also under investigation and accused of, of collecting lots of gifts and lots of favors and lots of booties at the cost of the people abusing his power. You go there in America, the same thing is going on. In France, same thing is going on in Nigeria, Hong Kong. Everywhere, in every pocket of the world, you can find that disgruntled people, dissatisfied people have been rising against the ruler, poor rulers, corrupt and unethical practices. That is good, absolutely positively, good for the nation. If people do not rise against, then they have no future. Then this kind of rogue and rowdy, vehicles and vehicle kinds of leaders are going to rob the nation perennially and perpetrate all kinds of crime against the humanity, against the nation, against all kinds of entities. These people are going to collect more courage to perpetrate more crimes. But if the person commits crime, and if that happens to be the first crime, and if that person is arrested or that person is suppressed, that person is stomped out, then that person is never going to think about committing second crime. So now that sort of things have been going on is called people power. So people power is rising everywhere against all kinds of corrupt, crooked and kleptocratic rulers. And this message is actually getting across the world. Everywhere in the world people are rising against their corrupt ruler. I have prepared five points to elaborate this topic today. <clears throat> Point number one is power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Churchill has said in 1945 that corrupt power is corrupting. Power itself is the nature of the power is corrupting. And when people has a little power, if only a little power is still, that person is going to corrupt. Corrupt, abuse this power, misuse this power, either for money, either for, or for any kind of authority, or perpetrating some kind of atrocities upon the people. So leaders, when they actually get loss of power, they don't do only one thing that they actually steal and loot the treasury of the nation. But they use or abuse or misuse, overuse this power in multiple ways. Even they exercise people, suppress people, oppress the people. They take the nation to wars, unnecessary thing. They drive wage, drive wage between the two communities like black and white or Hindu and Muslim and Christians and the Jews. These kind of things also do. These are also corrupt kind of practices. The problem with the people is that when we talk about corruption, they think that corruption is associated only with money. Mm -hmm.
No. When you are atrocizing the people, oppressing the people, when you are creating problem for the people, when you are pitting people against each other, when you are taking nation to the war, when you are spending lots of money on governing the nation, any kind of wrong thing you are doing which can be detrimental, which can be defined as detrimental for the interest of the nation, that is corruption. So Churchill has said power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. So when prime minister, presidents, chancellors, kings, emperors, when you give them absolute power, absolute power means total immunity to do anything they want without any kind of pun any kind of punishment, any kind of punitive damage. They cannot be removed. They cannot be thrown in jail. Then these people are going to perpetrate heinous crimes that you have never heard before. Take the example of Hitler, Mussolini, Hirohito, Tikka Khan of Pakistan, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. They had absolute power. And when they had absolute power, they can do every single thing, go beyond about a century. All those kings were ruling the nation, 562 princely states. And the king would decide within a snap, let's get ready to fight a war against the neighboring nation or neighboring princely state, and they would go. Lots of people were, lots of soldiers were killed, lots of civilians were killed just because the king did not like that neighbor king or neighbor king's attitude or neighbor king's some kind of retorts. So that was absolute power. When absolute power is given, absolute devastation can be invited. The point number two is, corruption is just like termite. Termite, we call it in our linguistic, our vernacular language, termite means uday. It's like uday, it's like termite. When corruption starts in the nation, it spreads like a jungle fire. Everybody becomes corrupt from chairman to chaiwala. And the corruption actually empowers the nation. Everyone who is not in power, powerful people are corrupt, then those people who have no power, some power people are going to suffer at the hands of those people who have loss of power. And it's like termite. It can destroy the nation's roots and the suit both. Point number three is rulers, this kind of corrupt, crooked, and kleptomaniac leader must be given capital punishment. Months means they must be beheaded, like in Saudi Arabia, like in China, Russia. These kind of people have no clemency, these kind of people are not getting, these kind of leaders are not getting any kind of pardon from the government, but only the punishment stated in the constitution for this kind of corrupt ruler, anti-national, betraying people, totally traitors, only the punishment is stipulated in the law is to hang them, give them capital punishment, or behead them. Nothing wrong with that. If one corrupt leader is beheaded, then every corrupt leader is going to become very well aware. They will all wake up. That will serve as a wake-up call for everyone else, and everyone else is going to become totally chastised, absolutely improved, absolutely honest like a saint, and no other leader would ever even think about committing any kind of corruption. But if you allow, then it will happen again and again and again. I'm not saying this. Sigmund Freud, Dr. Sigmund Freud, the father of our human psychology has said, if you allow a person to commit crime, then he will repeat it. If you punish the person for committing the crime, he will stop it. So now I'm going into four, point number four. Point number four is corruption can impoverish the nation in general. Corruption cannot untouch anyone. It doesn't discriminate 
anyone. Corruption can make everyone impoverished. Say, for example, one ruler is corrupt, then industrialists will suffer, small businessmen will suffer, micro and macro industry will suffer, general people are going to suffer, teachers are going to suffer, doctors are going to suffer, businessmen are going to suffer, every single person is going to suffer at the hand of this one corrupt ruler, because he's not going to spare anyone. He is going to perpetrate corruption, criminality, atrocities, suppression, oppression, all kinds of things on en masse. En masse means everyone and he is going to make everyone impoverished. He is going to make everyone miserable. So this is what the corruption can do. Point number four is only one, you need only one corrupt leader. Like only, you need only uncorrupt patriotic leader like Gandhi or Pandit Nehru or Vallabhai Patel. One leader can make a hell of a difference in the world. Only one leader can destroy the nation and one leader can construct the nation. Construction and destruction can be sired by only one leader. You don't need tons of leaders or you need thousands of leaders. Gandhiji were only one leader. Hitler was only one leader. So ruler, you need only one ruler who may be like Hammurabi, who can construct the nation, construct lives, construct the society. And you need only one leader like Hitler who can destruct the lives, destruct economy, destruct nation, destruct society. So corrupt leader even if you have only one corrupt leader in this nation or in any nation, like Benjamin over there in Israel, only one corrupt leader since 1948 is onset. It's a genesis. Only one leader is proven as corrupt. And the whole nation is upside down or topsy turvy. So one nation can totally destroy the nation. It can turn the nation topsy turvy. So, this is people power. People power must be awakened everywhere in the world. If people are aware, people are privy to the fact about their own rights, about the about the leaders, about the rule about this kind of rulers, if they become aware, if they, these become vigilantes, if these people can become privy about the fact that the ruler must not rule the nation with any kind of crime. Ruler is supposed to rule with gentleness, kindness, with sympathy, with politeness, and creating the society better than it was before. Ruler does not have any kind of license to destroy the nation destroy the lives of the people, destroy the economy of the nation. No. People power will change it and people power can change it. People power is so powerful that it can move Himalayas from north to south of India. So that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for listening and tomorrow we're going to talk about something else. If you have any kind of subject that bothering you or baffling you, Please send me, and we're going to write. A couple of days ago, Parmar sent me a subject, and the subject was very vast, very elaborate, so we could not fit it into this video or audio, whatever you call it. So I wrote it on the Facebook, and Parmar, if you are listening, if you have any other question, please feel free, be my guest, send me. I will appreciate it. Thank you very much. God bless all of us. Amen.